Welcome, my name is Anthony and I'm going to be your instructor for the course Amazon Web Services Certified Developer Associate Level. In this lesson we're going to take a look at what the course entails, any prerequisites that are required to take the certification, and how to best prepare for the certification. First off, let's talk about who should take the exam. There are currently three different associate level certifications from Amazon Web Services. There's Amazon Web Services Certified Solutions Architect, Certified Developer, and Certified SysOps Administrator. If you look at the exam requirements, the core services that are covered under each exam are covered differently. We might have covered S3 concepts as a Certified Solutions Architect, However, as a certified developer, we're going to cover S3 concepts from a different perspective, the developer perspective. We're also going to cover more in-depth services that are used by developers on Amazon Web Services. We can run our applications on a cloud computing platform such as Amazon Web Services as we would on a regular infrastructure. But there are certain services which we can actually use as developers and don't have to manage as much. Those services could be the simple notification service. Amazon DynamoDB. What this certification does is it covers more in depth or the services that are more in depth or more used by developers or applications developed using Amazon Web Services back end technologies. So we will look at the services that developers might use such as DynamoDB or Simple Notification Service in order to send notifications to Android or iOS applications. We'll look at Amazon S3 from a developer's perspective, different error codes, how to upload files, hosting websites. Now, if you've already taken the AWS Certified Solutions Architect course, you're already a step ahead. There's a lot of concepts that are applied from the Certified Solutions Architect course in the Amazon Certified Developer. If you haven't taken an exam, that's not a problem. We're going to teach you everything you need to know to become a certified developer. There are no additional prerequisites. However, if you've already taken one, you already have a lot of the core concepts which will be, have to be covered again. Let's say you're not interested in doing development on Amazon Web Services. Is this a certification that you should take? The concepts that are covered under the developer certification are geared towards development, but they're also geared towards individuals who will need to administer Amazon Web Services and applications that are developed on Amazon Web Services. You might have a developer who develops a whole bunch of code, but you're still in charge of managing AWS and DynamoDB and looking at those items. From that perspective, this is very much a course that you should take. Again, you don't have to be a professional developer in order to pass this. We're going to provide a lot of the code, and the exam really covers primarily concepts that are associated with development. So it's a great course to have if you're looking not only to develop on Amazon Web Services, but also be a systems administrator on Amazon Web Services. So anybody who might be supporting applications developed on AWS, whether you're a developer developing those applications, or whether you're a systems operator who will be supporting those applications. These concepts are very important. And again, you're going to learn a little bit of Python coding as we go through here. Any examples we have, we're going to provide the Python code for you to run. You won't have to create the Python code yourself, but you'll be able to look at it and run it, and so we can see how it acts and it interacts with our different services. Now, how do you prepare for the examination using this course? Well, first thing you're going to want to do is follow the video lessons. The video lessons are going to cover concepts and then go over into the Amazon console or Linux terminal to actually demonstrate those concepts so we can learn and see how they affect hands-on. What you'll want to do is you'll want to memorize the concepts and key terms from the section notes or the course required reading. We'll provide Python for code examples where they're needed. And you can use the linuxacademy.com hands-on labs. It's not required for you to take this course. Again, we're going to provide the Python code for you. However, you will need to take that Python code and put it on a Linux instance or a place to execute that Python code against Amazon Web Services using your API keys or an IAM role. If you would like to use pre-built labs where all of that is done for you, where all you have to do is start the lab, and run the code without having to set that up, you have the option of using linuxacademy.com hands-on labs. That is a membership and you can sign up for that at linuxacademy.com. Again, that's not required to pass the exam because we're going to provide all of the tools for you to use on your own. 
and let's take a look at the different certifications provided by Amazon Web Services. And let's look at who should take what certification. It's very important here because if you're a developer, you may not necessarily be interested in taking the Certified Solutions Architect or SysOps Administrator course. So this slide is for system administrators, architects, or engineers. If you are looking to administer or support Amazon Web Services from a technical perspective, then you'll want to take a look at the, at the associate level certifications. Amazon Web Services is going to provide three separate levels. You have your professional level and your master level and your associate level. If you want to support all the different services and be an expert inside of Amazon Web Services, we personally suggest that you take the Certified Solutions Architect Associate Level, Certified Developer Associate Level, and Certified SysOps Associate Level certifications. You will have a well-rounded knowledge of all common Amazon Web Services services, how to support them and how to use them. That makes you very marketable as a cloud architect. After you get your associate level, if you're looking to support Amazon Web Services at a more in-depth knowledge, but you're not looking to develop, then I would suggest going with the Certified Solutions Architect Professional and the SysOps Professional as well. If you're not looking to become an expert in developing on Amazon Web Services, then the associate level certification is enough. However, if you're a developer looking to become professionally certified, you will take the professional certification after taking the associate level certification. Again, you will have to get the associate level certification first, and the professional certification is not yet available. Again, if you are a developer and you're looking to master as a developer, you'll probably want to stick with the CDA Certified Developer Associate Level, which is this course, and then move on to the CDA Professional course. SysOps administrators or individuals who are looking not to develop but support Amazon Web Services, I highly suggest you get all of the associate level certifications the professional level certified solutions architect and the professional level sysops. If you have any questions at this time, please feel free to go ahead and ask. Else, go ahead and complete this introduction level, move on to your course, and begin studying for your certification.